Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Demetrius Delos. I'm one of the sports medicine surgeons here. Um, I've only been given 10 minutes to go over these two huge topics, so I'll be brief. I'm just going to go over concepts, really. What is the patella? So the kneecap, colloquially known as the kneecap, it's the circular triangular bone. It's in front of the knee. Uh, it serves an important role in increasing the leverage that the quadriceps muscle can generate. Really, it's a fulcrum for the quadriceps. The patella, the kneecap, is really connected by the quadriceps, quadriceps tendon up top and the patellar tendon below. And it forms a joint with the femoral trochlea. This is the groove at the end of the thigh bone. What is patellar instability? Well, if you unfortunately develop this, you're not going to be very happy. Uh, patellar instability is when the kneecap dislodges from the femoral groove. A subluxation event is a partial dislocation. What you're seeing here is a complete dislocation. You can see the kneecap is all the way out to the side. That's the most common way that the kneecap will dislocate. Obviously, this can lead to a lot of pain, swelling, and apprehension, especially with knee flexion. Um, in terms of the association with young women, it's extremely common. And I'll go over some of the etiologies, some of the reasons why that's the case. So uh, in light of the recent election, you may remember that uh, guy in New York who said the rent is too damn high. Well, uh, one of the main problems uh, or reasons that uh, patellar dislocations occur is because the patella is too high, especially in young women. So if you look here... This is the kneecap, and relatively speaking, it's high compared to the rest of the knee joint down here. When the patella is very high, it doesn't engage the groove. The groove is what gives it a lot of bony stability. So when it's too high, it doesn't engage the groove, and it can slide out the side. If the trochlear groove, or the, the groove at the end of the thigh bone, is too shallow, then it doesn't do a good job of holding the kneecap in place. So those are the bony reasons why patellar dislocations can occur. Obviously, if we didn't have ligaments, the bones would just be floating in space. So ligaments are what connect bone to bone. The main ligament that constrains or, or keeps in uh, position the kneecap and prevents patellar dislocation is the MPFL. So in orthopedics, we have tons of acronyms. The medial patellofemoral ligament, MPFL, is one of those. Uh, it's the major soft tissue constraint to lateral dislocation. Malalignment, meaning that the bones are just not positioned in the right way, and we have ways of measuring it. It's called the trochlear uh, groove tibial tubercle distance, for instance. Uh, that's a cause of patellar instability. And you can have a completely normal knee. You can take a 15-year-old, otherwise fairly stiff male, not one of these loosey-goosey young girls that sometimes you'll see uh, if you're a therapist, uh, they, they play football, they get struck in the knee, and they can dislocate their patella too. This is a very busy slide, but, uh, you know, basically when you, when you examine them, the things you want to look at are uh, really from the hip down to the foot. Because, oops, I apologize, I'm on call today. Um, the... Um, you start with the hip, so femoral antiversion. Very, you know, it sounds very complicated. The way I would describe it is if you've seen young girls and you ask them to sit Indian style, they actually sit in a W fashion. That's usually because they have too much motion, too much laxity in the hip. It's actually more of a bony problem. Uh, that's what femoral antiversion is. Excessive valgus, so these people who are very knock-kneed uh, may be predisposed to patellar instability. Tibial torsion is just a rotation of the tibia. And people who have flat feet may also uh, be predisposed to some of these other malalignment things. The Q angle, you may have heard of this. It's the quadriceps angle. We talk about it in orthopedics all the time. To be frank, we don't know what to make of it. It's basically the angle that the quadriceps tendon comes in and the patellar tendon comes up off the kneecap. Um, but we do think that if, if that angle is higher than normal, you may be predisposed to a kneecap dislocation. And then there are other things, uh, patellar tilt. Uh, someone who's had a recent uh, instability event may develop or, or demonstrate the apprehension sign. So you try to slide the kneecap out to the side, they're jumping off the table. That's the apprehension sign. 
the J sign is basically those people who, when you have them straighten out their knee, as the kneecap comes out of the groove, all of a sudden it slides out to the side. Uh, that's the J sign. X-rays are our mainstay, uh, obviously with um, uh, MRI much more available. We do a lot more MRI and CT is probably being used less and less. We use it now ver for very specific reasons. Um, but x-rays are the standard. When you look at a lateral of an x-ray, so you look at the knee from the side, you're looking to see just how high that kneecap is. Because again, it all goes back to the position of the kneecap. If it's too high, they may be predisposed to patellar instability. Look at the axial or the uh, merchant view. It's basically, it looks something like this. If your kneecap is out here, mm, there's probably something wrong. Um, <laughs> You look at an MRI, here's an MRI. Again, the kneecap is way out to the side. This, this is the groove. This groove is actually a little shallow. The kneecap is off to the side and you see a ton of fluid and here the ligament which connects the kneecap to the thigh bone has been stretched out. So you can tell immediately that this person had a patellar instability event. Uh, loose bodies are not that uncommon so you need to look around to see if a piece of cartilage has broken off because it's a, it's a, as you can imagine, it's a rather violent event. The kneecap slides out to the side. It ends up over here along the side of the femur. And then you try, you, obviously you want to try and put it back. So you put it back and that's another trauma. And along the way, you can really ding the cartilage. So you need to look around for that. And then the CT scan is probably the best at visual, visualizing the anatomy of the bone. And the bone is really the most fundamental thing. So. Uh, we use that in cases where, in terms of preoperative planning sometimes. For the first time dislocators, again, it's extremely common in young people to have a dislocation. We don't operate on everybody, that's for sure. A first time dislocator, uh, they almost universally are treated non-operatively. Uh, now there are caveats, which I'll get into, but basically physical therapy uh, is the mainstay. Bracing is useful. And initially, uh, they're so, certainly not going back to playing basketball or football within a week or two. So activity modification. Now, in those people who continue, despite non-operative measures, despite all the best physical therapy, despite bracing, they keep developing instability or demonstrating uh, instability, uh, those are the people we consider for surgery. The one, the one time we will uh, perhaps operate on the first time dislocator is if uh, they have a loose body or if they have a piece of cartilage that we think we should put back or if it's causing problems, etc. The ways we treat them non-operatively, uh, first of all, they tend to have a very large amount of swelling. Just taking out the fluid will make them feel better. So uh, we aspirate the fluid. Initially, I'll typically keep them in a brace that locks the knee out straight to really settle down the knee. And then we use something that looks like this. It's a patellar stabilizing brace um, to give them some control as they start moving their knee. And then physical therapy is certainly the mainstay. Now I will say that if you look at outcomes uh, uh, in terms of treatment of patellar instability, it can go anywhere from 10% to 50% will have a recurrent um, event. So again, despite all our best efforts to prevent that from happening again, it can. If it does, the ways we treat it are with simple arthroscopy. If it just means that something is floating around, we may just take that out. But oftentimes we'll do it in conjunction with something else. So in the past, we used to take that ligament that connected, again, the, the patella to the femur. We used to take that ligament and just because it was stretched out, we just sort of bunch it back together and tie it back down together. But we found that um, you can get better results if you just replace the ligament. So what we do is we take, we take a graft tendon that looks like this, and there are a number of ways to position it, but in essence, it goes from the kneecap to the femur, and uh, you secure it there. And with those sort of operative methods, we can get the re-dislocation re -dislocation rate to way less than 5 or 10 percent, some, some series even 0 percent. But uh, the, one, the one thing you need to always take into consideration is, again, the bone is the most fundamental thing. If you do a soft tissue procedure and you don't address the bone, guess what? It may happen again. So you need to really look at what is the position of the kneecap, what is their alignment. If there are any issues with alignment or position of the kneecap, 
then you need to do a bigger procedure and bite the bullet and basically do an osteotomy. And an osteotomy is a bone cutting procedure. It's a realignment procedure uh, whereby you actually realign the tubercle, which is where the patellar tendon, the tendon goes from here to here. You cut the tubercle and then you move it into a position where you can decrease the risk of instability. And you secure it with those screws that you see there. And that, and that surgery works very well, but as you can imagine, it's hard to convince or at least uh, explain it to a 15-year-old that I'm going to cut your bone and move everything, etc. So we try not to get to that point unless we really have to. Patellofemoral disease, and I bet you almost everybody has experienced this. So again, you could talk about this for days. Uh, it is distinct from instability. So I always ask patients, what's your main problem? Is it you feel the kneecap is loose or that it hurts you uh, or that the knee hurts you? So when you have pain as the main complaint in the front of the knee or around the kneecap or even in the back of the knee, uh, that's usually patellofemoral disease sometimes known as patellofemoral syndrome, chondromalacia patellae. We have a number of things to describe it, probably because we just don't understand it, so we just make up names. Um, so this is more common in women and female athletes, and again, it all goes down to anatomy, and that's probably the main reason. I talked about the Q angle. It's the quadriceps angle. So if you look at someone who you know, basically standing up straight like this. This is a more normal Q angle. Inevitably, they'll have a line that goes from here towards the midline and then down. But people who, are ex who have excessive knock knee type deformity, people who tend to be a little bit shorter, um, they may have a more abnormal Q angle. And you can imagine that if the pull of the quadriceps is in this, is, is in this direction, your kneecap is over here, all the way over here, you can imagine that the pull, by nature, just wants to, pull, wants, wants to take the kneecap out laterally, and that can increase uh, the contact forces and create pain. When you look at the kneecap itself, it can be tilted because, again, ligaments are what connect bone to bone, and so if you see that the kneecap is in a certain position, you have to ask yourself, well, maybe there are tight structures along the lateral side, and that's what we call tilt, when the kneecap is tilted rather than parallel uh, to the femur. Traditionally, muscular imbalance was considered a cause, so we always talk about the VMO or the vastus medialis obliquus uh, muscle, which is along the inner side of the knee. Um, so that was always considered, well, we need to strengthen the VMO, strengthen the VMO. I don't know how effective that is in terms of it's very difficult to target that one particular muscle, uh, but if you look at textbooks, muscular imbalance is considered um, a potential cause, and just simple physical overload. Sometimes you heard of things, runner's knee, etc. People who really increase the volume and intensity uh, of their activity can simply develop patellofemoral pain, even if everything else is normal. Symptoms, again, it all goes back down to pain. This is why some of your doctors may say, don't ever do deep squats, don't ever do lunges, etc. You, again, we go back, I'll go back to the anatomy. When your knee is completely straight, the kneecap is out of the groove, it's fairly free to move around, it's not really contacting anything. Uh, so you don't really develop kneecap pain when you're just standing straight. It's when you bend the knee that the contact forces go up, and that's when people experience this type of pain. So guess what? The things that involve bending the knee tend to aggravate it. Prolonged sitting, I can't tell you how many times. I sit, in, sit to watch the movie, I have to stretch out my leg. I'm sitting in the car for an hour to work every day, it's killing me. Those type of symptoms almost always point to the patellofemoral joint. Uh, they may complain, oh, my knee's cracking, popping, clicking. Again, it's the way the kneecap is, is moving. Uh, some of the things we look for, again, the same sort of malalignment, uh, we look for pain, tenderness along the sides of the kneecap, and tilt. Usually we'll just take x-rays. Sometimes we'll look at uh, MRI. Uh, there are new methods that can, um, that can be used, more experimental methods, uh, that will show areas of cartilage along the kneecap that may be, um, may be softening up, may be developing some mild degeneration. Almost universally, this is treated non-operatively with physical therapy, weight loss, activity modification, anti-inflammatories, sometimes injections. 
Bracing probably doesn't have as much of a role. And extremely, in, in extremely rare occasions and, um, and in patients do we operate. Uh, and it depends on the extent of the disease and what's going on. If they have patellar tilt, we may just release the ligaments on the side of the kneecap laterally. But if it's a more chronic, uh, more um, advanced problem, we may have to do a realignment procedure. Basically, again, moving the, the tibial tubercle to offset load along the kneecap. So some of the conclusions, uh, patellar instability is very common, especially in young women. Typically, we treat them conservatively, but if it keeps coming back, we have to operate. And you need to address both the soft tissue and the alignment issue. And then in patellofemoral disease, we're almost always treating this non-operatively. Okay, thank you.